City of Heroes slash Villains was one of my favorite MMOs I ever played while growing up. In 2004, while the world was captivated by the immersive realms of World of Warcraft, City of Heroes was my escape into an exciting world of superheroes and supervillains. City of Heroes offered a brand new experience filled with endless excitement and limitless possibilities of creating your very own unique superhero or villain with a variety of customization options and powers to choose from. Today we are going to explore what may City of Heroes such an unforgettable game, one that held a special place in the hearts of many players during the era of MMO dominance. City of Heroes and City of Villains released in 2004 and 2005 respectively. They were both groundbreaking massive multiplayer online role-playing games that captivated players with their unique blend of gameplay, storytelling, and immersive world building. City of Heroes allowed players to create their own superheroes, granting them the ability to select their power sets, origin stories, and archetypes. This freedom allowed for an incredibly diverse roster of characters, each with their own unique set of abilities and playstyles. From the swift and agile martial artists to mighty brutes with super strength, players could bring their own heroic visions to life. City of Villains, on the other hand, provided players with the opportunity opportunity to create their own supervillains, complete with unique power sets, origins, and archetypes. Players can unleash their wicked imaginations, crafting characters ranging from sinister masterminds to ruthless assassins. Each game introduced players to iconic NPCs or non-playable characters, played significant roles in the overarching storyline. Characters like Statesman, the leader and protector of Paragon City, Lord Recluse, leader of the Council of Rogues and Freedom, Phalanx, Arch Enemy, Rachnos and her assassin minions, Sentinel's faction, and so many more. Many of these characters offered guidance, missions, and compelling interactions for each player. These characters became legends, adding depth and immersion to every new player's journey. I still remember being obsessed with the look of Lord Recluse and wanting to get armor that matched him and his arachnoid act pieces. Players would embark on epic quests, confront dangerous supervillains, or complete chaotic missions. Each mission was crafted with care, offering exciting challenges, twists, and turns that kept players engaged. The narrative arcs spanned multiple levels and zones, gradually revealing the larger picture of the game world and the conflicts within it. Safeguard missions were available to heroes, and their objective was to stop a villain from robbing a bank. A villain would have a limited time to rob the bank, and a hero would defeat them before they would escape. If the hero was successful, they would earn the experience points and a reward. Mayhem missions, were, on the other hand, were available to villains, and their objective was to rob a bank. A villain would have a limited amount of time to rob a bank, and they would have to defeat any heroes who tried to stop Stop them. If the villain was successful, they would earn experience points and a reward, and sometimes a temporary power. I still remember creating my very first villain character and robbing countless banks while setting the enemies and heroes aflame with all of my flame abilities. The gameplay mechanics in City of Heroes and City of Villains were intuitive, allowing both newcomers and experienced players to jump right into the action. The combat system was a fast-paced and satisfying, with a variety of powers and abilities at the player's disposal. Both games also offered exciting team-based content, encouraging cooperative play and fostering a sense of camaraderie among players. From epic battles against powerful enemies to the thrill-stopping evil plans, the gameplay was consistent exciting and entertaining. Both Hero's storyline and the villain's storyline were well written and engaging. They offered players a variety of different missions to choose from and they featured a cast of memorable characters. The stories also helped to flesh out the world of City of Heroes slash Villains and make it feel more real and the community was also very interactive. Most players of City of Heroes slash Villains were active and friendly when the game was still alive. Players were always willing to help out new players and offer advice. The game also featured a number of social features such as chat rooms, player run guilds, and so much more, similar to almost any other MMO that's out there. This made the game more enjoyable and helped to create a sense of community among players. Players. After the game was shut down, the community moved to private servers that allowed players to continue playing the game. These servers have been able to keep the community alive and active, and they have provided players with a new way to continue enjoying the game that they love. City of Heroes Homecoming is one of the most popular private servers. City of Heroes Homecoming Project is a community-driven initiative that aims to bring the beloved City of Heroes experience after its original servers shut down in 2012. Recognizing the enduring love and nostalgia for the game, a group of dedicated its fans and volunteers join to forces to create a private server that faithfully recreates the City of Heroes experience. Homecoming offers players the opportunity to relive these superhero adventures. 
character customization, and thrilling gameplay that made City of Heroes so beloved. It provides a stable and updated server environment where players can create their own superheroes, team up with friends, and explore the sprawling metropolis of Paragon City once again. The project offers multiple servers to accommodate the growing player base, each with their own unique focus and rule set. The servers include Excelsior, Reunion, Torchbearer, and more. The homecoming project also takes into account player feedback and continuously updates and improves the game to ensure a smooth and enjoyable experience. This includes addressing bugs, implementing quality of life improvements, and even introducing new content and storylines to keep the game fresh and engaging. City of Heroes and City of Villains were groundbreaking MMO RPGs that were truly ahead of their time. They captivated players with their unique blend of gameplay, storytelling, and immersive world building. And while the games are no longer officially supported, there are a number of private servers that allow players to continue enjoying them. These servers offer a stable and updated environment where players can relive the superhero adventures that made City of Heroes and City of Villains so beloved. With advancements in technology and the ever-growing popularity of superheroes, I can only hope that one day we get to see more original superhero IP and see games like City of Heroes shine once again. At least in the meantime, we are getting games such as Insomniac, Spider-Man 2, Future Wolverine game, and even an Iron Man game, so there is hope on the horizon. If you are a fan of superhero games or MMORPGs, I highly recommend checking out City of Heroes Homecoming. I've played it probably once or twice just to create a character and kind of have that nostalgia feeling, feeling for the game, and I can definitely say it brings back that classic experience for reliving Paragon City. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, be a superhero. Leave a like on it. Subscribe for more content like this and leave a comment if you have any other fond memories of the game. For now, that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.